Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm back today with the second part of our grungy envelope folio. I've made a bit of a start just collecting some of the things together that I'm going to use, although I haven't done anything on the envelope kind of off camera without you. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to create, where's that original one? There it is. We're going to create this little flap here first. Um, now on this one, what I used was some thick packaging paper. I think this was, um, I think it was a bag that came from Amazon or could have been H&M or Zara or something like that but it's quite it's a little bit thicker than the paper that you get in packaging um, you know that comes inside boxes so I'm going to use this I think I don't think it's the, quite the same as what I used here but but we'll see how it goes so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the size that I want my pocket to be here. Now you can see from this one, I just actually did it quite roughly and I just teared it down, made it slightly bigger at the back, just to give it a bit of interest. I'm gonna do the same with this one. So I think, let's have a look. Um, yeah, I think I'll do it this side. Right, I'm gonna do it this side. Let's see, I don't want that perforated bit, so I'm just going to grab a pencil. Um, and I'm going to measure. I kind of want it to start about there. So I'll measure from about there. To about there. And then I want it to come out to about... Yeah, I think. Okay, so I'm going to cut that down and see how, see what that looks like. So, how have you all been? I hope you've all been doing well. And that you've managed to... Oh, I'm not going to be able to cut that, am I? And that you've been able to get lots of crafting done. Sorry, I kind of went straight into it then, didn't I? With <laughs> without even asking how anybody was. And that's because I'm concentrating. So there, to there. All right, so that's gonna give us our, hopefully give us our basic size that we want. Right, so. Ah, actually, no, that's not going to work, is it? It needed to be longer. Would it work? No, that won't work. Right, let's have another look. Right, I'm going to cut all this off. I'm going to start from there. Cut this bit down. Right, so I'm going to fold it first. That would make more sense. Should have done that to begin with. I'm going to fold it first. So I can get a rough idea of what I need. That's better. Okay, so that. Let's cut that down and maybe just a tad. No, actually it might be all right. be okay actually. What did I do on there? That one's a little bit shorter. Perhaps we'll do it a tiny bit shorter. So I'll just cut that down. I'm just going to tear it. I'm not after anything perfect with it being that grungy look. So I'm just going to um, tear this down. Although it's quite tough, this paper. Am I going to be able to do it? And it does take a bit of strength actually to tear it. So I'll tear that down. Let's see. 
detail. That's better. So that's going on there. And then here, I want it to about... So there I want my... This texture paste to show. So I would say I want it about there. So I'll tear this down first. Let's see what this looks like. I'm sorry, I'm at a really weird angle. I've got the tripod set up right next to me and it means this arm is at a really funny position. So I'll do that one first and I'll tear down here. And hopefully we'll get something which is... Which looks about how we want it to look. Right. I think that needs to be a little bit smaller. What I'm going to try and do as I tear, I'm going to try and kind of bring it out a little bit so that you still get to see it behind this bit. Do I want to go any smaller? I've still got quite a bit of texture paste there, haven't I? I'll go a little bit smaller. I don't want to go so small that it means. there's not much room here but at the same time I don't want to put all that texture paste on to then not see it so let's have a look right so it's going to go there yeah right okay I think I'm happy with that I might just Get my ruler and tear a little bit here just to get rid of that very straight edge. I'm sorry if I'm moving the table. Oh, come on. It's not wanting to come. Oh, God. I'm going to try it this side. I'm going to try doing it this side with the... Some of this rubbish. Get this moved out of the way. I don't like, I like to get rid of all my bits and bobs because I can't stand trying to work out what I'm doing when I've got a load of stuff in my way. Okay. Right. Yeah, happy with that. So that is going to go on there and that will make our flippy out writing little writing slot now I'm going to adapt it a little bit than I did on this one well all of them actually what I what I'd intended to do and what I forgot to do three times is put a few pages in and I thought oh that would make just a little bit of um a nice um little extra and also you know, it gives you that little bit of extra journaling space and things. So what I think I might do in this one is I'm going to back it and then they're going to add some pages into um, this little flip. So again, this is what I did wrong on the last one and I've done it wrong again. Um, I should really have stuck this on here first before cutting around here. Because now, obviously, I'm going to have to try and cut around um, and try and get this kind of decorative edge. It doesn't matter. I just work around it. But I think what I'm going to do is I quite like the look. Because I'm going to put pages in. I don't think I need to have something too plain. I can go a little bit more decorative on this, I think. So I think what I'm going to try and do utilize this pattern on here I think that's what I'll do so I will just get some glue turn this over get this glue 
glued down. Like that. I'm going to try and get it. I can just see the pattern through. Paper and I think I've probably gone and done that back to front as well, but we'll have a look. Oh, you know, it's all a learning curve, isn't it? Doing it on camera when you're trying to <laughs> position yourself so that you're not in the way of the tripod and so that you're keeping yourself on screen and things like that. So we'll just see how that goes. But to be honest, this is how I craft, you know, I don't kind of have a plan. I just do it and see what happens. And that's how that's how these came about. Just by having um, a mess and seeing what I could come up with. And I think sometimes that's the best way. Because it stops you from getting too bogged down, I think. Of getting things perfect and getting your lines perfect and getting it right first time because now in life, we don't get things right first time, do we? It's all trial and error. Right, so that is that. Now I'm actually just going to leave that for the moment. To let that dry a little bit. Because I don't really want to be folding it. While that glue's wet. So I'm worried that it's going to buckle. Mm, actually, it could be alright. Shall, shall I try it? Where's my, um, excuse me, reaching? Right, it's going to go that way, isn't it? So, I oh, see, it's buckling already. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that to dry. And perhaps what we'll do while we're waiting is do our... I'll use this one. I'll use that one. We'll do our um, fold out bit here. So these are really easy to make. You just need one sheet of copy dye paper. This is A4, but obviously if you work on um, US sizes, yours, yours will be the US letter size. Um, so, really easy to make, and this is all you do. You just you have it up this way, see so it's vertical. And then, you just fold it over like that. I'm not going to use my bone folder yet, because I may need to adjust this a little bit. Because then you need to fold it into thirds or thereabouts. Now I like to have mine with a little bit of space here because I like to fold it in like that. And I don't want this bit coming right up to that crease. Because I just feel that it would um, kind of prevent it from having that nice, that nice fold. Where's my bone folder? There it is. So if I went like that, that would give me, yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna fold that down like that. And get this one folded. You can see here how this one's shorter. That's fine, because that one's, that one's actually going to go on the inside. Like that. Uh, now, I made, well, I thought I'd made a bit of a mistake the first time I did this because I folded it so that, and I had my fold at the top here and then I cut my little tag shape and what happened was I got diamonds. You know, like you used to do those snowflakes at school where you used to fold it over and cut it out. It created diamonds, and I thought, oh, I did that. You know, I didn't want that. 
um, presumed I'd done it wrong. So what I then did was folded it, was turn the paper so that I had this bit at the top, folded it in. See, that's now the wrong way around. Folded, I should have turned it earlier. Folded it in like that, which meant that it comes down this way and you haven't cut into your crease there, so you don't get those diamonds. But I saw this on Gail um channel, and she got one out the other day um, on one of her last videos, and she had the diamonds. So she'd obviously cut hers on that crease. Um, so now I'm not so sure. Um, perhaps it's just a preference of mine, you know, perhaps I... Um, just didn't like it so therefore thought I'd done it wrong I don't know um so I guess the moral of that story is just do what you like <laughs> what, you, what you like the look of I'm actually going to have mine so that I've got the the open bit at the top so that I don't make that diamond shape on the crease and I may have to rethink this now because I folded it upside down and I should have done that before I bone folded it that's the bit that I want shorter this is the bit that I want longer. Although I don't suppose it matters. I could just have it like that, couldn't I? It's going to go down like that. Yeah, I'll just have it that way. I'm making a bit of a fuss now. Right. So. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tag shape here now on this one I did actually use I I'd already had one of these tags cut out and I used it to help me cut the angle of this one which really is perhaps what I should have done but I've not got one to hand so perhaps if I put that there I can kind of maybe use a bit of a use it as a template so maybe like that, like, oops, like that, maybe, that's not right, is it? Right, I'll do it this way. The reason I don't like doing it like this is because I get it wrong. I seem to twist this and get the wrong bit. I get the wrong corner bit here then it makes this side the wrong size and we'll see have I done it no nope, I've done it wrong why do I get that wrong every time I get literally get that wrong <laughs> every time okay that looks better There you go, so you would unfold it like that, and there's your tag. Why is that bit not cut? Let's make this a bit longer. There you go, okay, that's better. So, yeah, there you go, after a lot of fussing, so you would fold that down like that, and you would have your fold out tag I've made that look a lot more complicated than what it is but basically a4 piece of paper this way up fold fold into thirds cut a tag shape and you're done so the next step because I wanted this grungy is I actually went around all the sides with walnut stain so I did all the kind of these bits here the little triangular bits all the way around and then I folded as well I folded it in and did these creases and these creases and then did the same on the other side so I will do that now I'll speed it up so that you don't have to watch me do it all you know in you know in um actual real time because that it does take quite a while and then I'll be back with you
Okay, I'm back. Um, so I've got all this inked up, both sides. You'll also see on the time lapse as well that I actually went round with some vintage photo just to darken up some areas where it wasn't quite dark enough for my taste for this project. And also I had to refold, kind of refold and rearrange um, my paper a little bit because it wasn't quite meeting where I wanted it to. Look, I can't fold it back now. There you go. So you'll also, oh, that's not right. So you'll also see me doing that as well and cutting things and what's going on with that now? Various things like that. So I've got all that sorted. Have I done that wrong? Is it that way? Is it that way? Do you know, I'm having one of them days today. I'm going to do it that way because it's... Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. So I've got all that sorted. Took me longer than I thought. The only other thing I did while I was off camera is I cut out one of these tags and all I'm going to do now is just quickly go round with my walnut stain and you'll see the colours I chose for this kit as soon as you start putting this walnut stain on they just, they just, it blends so nicely and just really gives it that finished feel to it. So I'm just, you can see the difference already. I think with using this kind of, it's, if you can see in the camera, can you see that? It's got a texture, like almost like a leathery type texture to it. So, this colour this blends really nicely with it. I do like it. So that's going to go on there. I'm just going to punch this hole. And then just cover any white where I've got it a little bit off centre. Okay. So we're going to have that on there. I also went ahead off camera and got some thread ready and a needle because I'm going to add some detail in like I did on this one. I just did a little bit of cross stitching on there. I'm not a stitcher at all. In fact, I can't sew to save my life just about get a button on and even then it would probably fall off again so by no means um you know please don't take this as a tutorial for doing stitching i'm just going to go ahead and do it how i do it i simply stitch onto things because i like the look of it and it doesn't bother me not having things absolutely perfect in fact i quite like that on unperfect finished things um now i don't have the best needle this is the only needle i had as you can see it's large and it's fairly blunt at the end i do need a smaller needle and it isn't the best needle for this particularly for going through paper because it doesn't have a very pointy end it will tend to rip the paper a little bit however it's the only needle i've got if i was to go into a shop and find a smaller needle i would get one but I haven't done that so far and I'm working with what I've got because we don't need to always be buying things, do we? Because everything adds up. Everything's a, you know, the, the cost of crafting stuff amazes me. I'm surprised anyone crafts, to be honest. And I suppose that's why we've got into using a lot of recycled things, isn't it? Because things, things are just so expensive. And what I do to try and combat the fact that I'm missing that point is I actually get my all and I just make some holes. I pre-make some holes. So I've got one there. I'm going to do four. No, I'm not. I'm going to do... I'm going to do eight. So I've got four for this one. Then we're going to do another two here. So I'm just going to make those holes like that. 
And that just gives me a little bit of a starting point for my needle because I don't have a, a sharp point to begin with. So that's four. So then that would be my cross there. And then we're going to do another four here. So one. I'm sorry if it's moving the table. Two. Three. And again, these aren't measured or anything, so they could come out any old size. But again, you know, that doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, you can always get a ruler and kind of line it up and measure it and, and things. So I'm just going to now, I've got my eight holes there. I'm just going to make them a tiny bit wider. And I'm going to go in this way so that they look neat. So that I'm not having that, all, you know, that raised bit from the front. Make those a little bit bigger. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, this is just ordinary um, embroidery thread. In fact, I think I got this in one of those. You know, you can get those embroidery kits where you get like the embroidery ring and the linen with the, with the pattern on and you can kind of follow the instructions. I think this is from there. So I'm just going to thread that. Good, good thing about having an inappropriately oversized needle is that you get a, a lovely nice big eye. And I'm going to just snip some of that off. And I'm going to go in from the back. So I'm going to go in there. So it's gone the top left. You can see already how big now my hole's gone because my needle is a silly size. But it's exactly the same as on there and I think that looks pretty good. So it doesn't bother me. And I'm going to pull it to about there. And a little trick I have is this isn't the best washi it's a little bit too wide but my thinner washi is on inside the drawer that my tripod is currently on so I'm just going to make do with this and get a bit of washi and tape it tape it out the way so it's out the way and it stays pop so I've gone in top left I'm going to go back through okay then we're going to go top right will that be top right for you the way you're looking at it not reversed is it because you're on camera or is it and back through Okay, that's our first cross, and you can see if you just kind of fiddle about with it, you can kind of close those holes up a little bit. So we're going to go back in, top left. Oops, okay. Back through. right and back through Oops. okay there we have our little crosses so I'm going to turn that over I'm going to chop that off to off a bit further actually get another little bit of washi let's keep this in place okay and then now what I have been doing is because we've got I've got well I've got you probably won't because you'll probably use a proper needle but because I've got these larger holes been made what I've then been doing is getting some and I bet I don't have any here we go. It's 
excuse me, I'm just getting some paper. I've been getting a little bit of scrap coffee dyed paper or tea dyed paper and sticking that over the top, which helps in keeping obviously the thread in place, but also just fills in those holes that I've created with the needle. Whoops. Oh, my glue's gone all sticky and horrible. Ugh. Right. So let's get that stuck down. So I've just been putting a little bit on there like that. And that's given a nice neat finish. And when we turn it over, it's just secured that in place as well. So that's all I've been doing with that. As I say, I'm not a seamstress, I don't stitch, I don't so I can just about put a button on. Um, you know, I can't do things like put hems up on my little boy's trousers or anything like that. You know, I have to send that job to Nanny and she does it, but I like it for decorative purposes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to stick that on there like that. And I did go ahead and fussy cut some of the images that come in the kits. And I tried the bird and I tried the butterfly. But I felt like they blended in too much. And then I tried this one, which I quite liked the way it kind of fell, you know, fell kind of fell down this way. I like the shape of that. So I think what I'm going to do is get that stuck down, ink this up, stick that on top of it, and then we'll be done. So I'm actually using on here, you know, you get these booklets from Loaf. Well, quite a lot of places do them, you know, like Cox and Cox and those type of places. They send you these and they're really good. I've been using them for, it's not actually my glue book. My glue book is usually an old magazine of my little boys. That he's finished with but uh, I haven't got any of those left so I'm just using this but I have I have been using them this week to make collage pages and they work really well so I will have to do, I'll have to do a video on that I think okay so I'm gonna stick that on there like that I'm trying to get it straight these tags are intentionally not straight so just get it, you know, that's that's the look of them. They're kind of wiggly. Get it as straight as you can. Kind of get it in place where you want it. Try and get it that way a little bit. Is it going to go? Yep. Right. Smooth that down. Now we're going to take that off. Change my little sponge and just with some vintage photo. I'm just going to go over this image a little bit and just to get rid of that white. I mean, there's fussy cutting and then there's fussy cutting and I just could not, I couldn't, I just thought, oh, if I attempt to get my scissors in through there, it's just not going to happen. But again, I will show you with this kit, for some reason, the colours that I've chosen, they just blend. So this will not look white, it will not look separate, it'll just, for some reason, blend in beautifully to the paper once it's stuck down. When you, you know, once you've put this little bit of inking on. So there you go, that's that one. And I'm just now going to go around the edge. A tiny bit of the walnut stain just to tie it all in together. Not loads, just to get rid of the that white edge where I've oops, where I've cut my own camera. Okay, so that's that done. Let's try and get in these bits here. I 
And can you see, when we now stick that down, it just blends, see how beautifully it just blends in. All those kind of muted browns and um, peaches and just yumminess. I love that. All right, I'm going to get that sucked down. I'm going to put that just so it kind of falls kind of almost waterfally like that it reminds me of my wedding bouquet actually my wedding bouquet kind of went like that not the one that I held the one that you know the one that goes on the front of the table when you sign the register that one so there we have it there's our journaling spot which is going to go onto our envelope. So I'm going to put that, eventually it will stick here, like so. Okay. And you can just see it all starts to blend in and tie in so nicely. Love it. Right, so I'm gonna put those together and I'm going to bring back in, where did I put it? Um, where did I put it? Where did I put it? I swear, there's goblins in this room. <laughs> I'm literally always losing stuff. Here it is. Goodness me. Right, so this, this now is dry. This is going to be our flippy booklet, remember. So what I'm going to do is fold it in back in half along the, the fold here. Okay, and I'm just going to rip anything of this white that's overhanging, I can always um, ink up, and you'll be none the wiser. Well, it's easy doing it this way, actually. I should have done it this way to begin with. All right, so I'm going to rip that off, this off. Now, it's actually quite easy to rip because anywhere where it's not glued, it's just going to come up. So as long as you've got a good amount of glue on here, when you come to rip this up, I don't think you'd have many problems. Okay, I'm just going to rip that down. go that's the start of our booklet so already I'm loving this with the texture and the pattern here the rough edge and then we open it up we're gonna have our pages in there and this will go on here okay so you can see there I use the backing paper that comes with the kit this is the backing paper as well it's just one of the other ones both work well and I'm just going to go around that again with some walnut stain because I want the brownness and the grunginess of this to come through. I was thinking the other day, actually, when I did my first video, the first part of this, I was thinking, I've gone on about using my kit and I hope people don't think that I'm saying, you know, giving myself an advertisement. Well, obviously, it's a little bit of an advertisement because that... You know, I designed it and I'm using it on video, but I didn't mean to come across as, you know, you must go out and buy this kit. It's not honestly not what I meant at all. And I thought, I hope that's not how I've come across because it's definitely not how it was intended. Um, you know, I just wanted something, you know, that looks like this because it's, you know, I fancied using something like this. So I went ahead and made it. Um, I went about making it and putting it together simply because I wanted something um, 
and that's you know that's why I'm using it here but please don't think that I was trying to say you know you must use this or don't do it with any others you know other creators kits or don't use kits that you've bought from other Etsy shops you know obviously it, that's not what I meant I mean I know you knew that's not what I meant but it's um I think it's human nature to worry about like that, isn't it? You don't want to offend people. And like I was just saying, craft stuff's so expensive that, you know, I'm really not encouraging you to spend money if you don't want to or if you haven't got that money to spend, you know. So please just use either a different digital kit that you've got or anything in your stash. In fact, I might do one of these just with some paper I've got in my stash as well at one point at some point but yeah I was like really concerned because I thought oh, I hope I've not come across as um being I don't really know what the word would be um self-obsessed I don't know something like that I don't know if that was a little bit harsh on myself but you know what I mean I just didn't want to be like oh you know my kit my kit and look like I was being bossy or not being very nice or anything like that okay so let's have a look what we've got so we've got our flippy out here that's going to go on there I probably would have liked that a bit longer to be honest but not to worry this I think this looks really nice can you see this pattern I think that looks really nice actually with that stenciling that we've done I'm actually losing quite a bit of that texture but not to worry quite like that all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our picture on here so what I'll do is I'll pause you while I go and locate it because I did cut it out somewhere but I can't find it and then I'll be back right I'm back so I just found that picture from the kit it's on this page here where you get the four smaller journaling cards and all I'm going to do with that again is ink around the side and again it just blends so nicely this walnut this walnut stone I want it quite grungy remember so I'm going quite heavy with mine because I also think it helps the colours to blend with the craft of the um, this paper that we've used that's going to go onto there so let's just get that stuck down my glue get it squared up how you want it That's it. right and the next thing as I said I didn't do these on the others because I kept forgetting but I kept meaning to but the next thing is I want to put some pages inside this little booklet I did bring to my desk um, some full sheets but I'm wondering now because this is actually quite thin whether I could get away with using some scraps let's see how it goes let's just see so I don't really want the pages coming past here because I like that 
one's maybe a bit too thin. That would work, would it? Yeah, we could cut that down, so I would want that to be cut about there. That bit I could use, it's a short bit. So it'd be like a scrappy booklet. So, in theory, if I was to go just to the left of where I folded it, that should all fit. A little bit showing there. Okay, that fits. Let's try this one. I may have to have it more towards the top so that it's not showing, you know, where I've ripped it out here. And then I could maybe have a, a longer, skinnier piece. It just makes a little bit of a difference, doesn't it? I mean, you can still write on here. Or you can stick some paper on or something. I'm going to actually do that further than what I originally planned because that could, I could do that. That would then fit like that. Okay. Happy with that. It's this bit here is causing me grief. I can still see it. I think it might just be best if I cut that down a tiny bit. I liked it because of the black. open it up and we've got a little bit of a scrappy booklet so all I'm going to do is staple that in I'm not going to bother with a pamphlet stitch because I don't want to add any bulk to um, the spine because it's going onto the envelope I'm just going to put that in place there. Yeah. Um, bear with me one minute. Just have to get my long arm stapler. And I'm going to... Oops, it doesn't want to be there, does it? There we go. Going to staple this in now. When I staple, I like to do it slightly to the back of the booklet so that I, I can't see the staples. It doesn't always work out, but we'll try. One about there. One about there. Do I need one in the middle? I'd help if that was straight, wouldn't it? And there you go. Do I need one in the middle, do you think? Yeah, I think I will just put one in the middle. Just to be safe. There we go. Right, so that's that done. Let's give this a burnish. Make sure everything's nicely folded. 
can see I haven't got it towards the back but I've got it more towards the back than the front so apart from that one make sure these are giving a good burnish and fold down you could if you wanted stencil on these add a bit more ink to it if you feel you wanted to let's get these nice and bent down there we have it there is our booklet ready to go onto our envelope like that so then when you open that up you've got your writing space either side and you've got your little bit of extras in there like that okay so I am just going to go and grab my I use Fabri-Tac to glue it down because just because of all the layers you know where I've got all the texture and it's crinkled a little bit so I'm going to go grab my Fabri-Tac I'm not going to do anything fancy like make a pocket or anything I'm just literally going to stick the whole thing down onto there what I may do though is get some washi tape or some fabric tape and run some on here just to protect that spine and give it a little bit more strength so I'm going to go and grab out all of that and then I will be be back with you in a tick. Hi, I'm back. I've got my fabric tack and I've got my fabric tape. This is just the hip Tim Holtz tape. I'm just going to stick some down there just to give it a bit of strength. To be honest, on these ones, the pre made envelopes, they're pretty strong. They don't really need this, but I actually like the pink with the pink I think it just sets it off nicely so I'm just going to pop that down I've already measured it to length now usually with washi I would use glue but this stuff is really sticky why can't I get this back off yeah this stuff is really sticky and I don't think it needs it to be honest I don't think it's going anywhere once it's down. That you can already see how sticky it is. So I'm just going to put that. Make sure I've got it the right way. I'm just going to put that here. About halfway. straight turn it over and just trim off any extra okay and that'll just make it look nice to be honest more than anything Pull that very straight, did I? Let's get that back off. I do seem to have a little bit of repositioning time with this tape, which is good because I never seem to get it straight where I needed. That's not really improved it much, but never mind. Okay. So that's on there like that. And now I'm just going to stick that down in place like so. And we'll, that will make the front of our envelope. So I'm just going to get some of this on here. It's really strong, this stuff. Stinks. It makes me go all wheezy. I have found though, if you if you put the nozzle right next to, I mean right onto 
the surface it spreads it out for you so you don't get that you know sometimes with this stuff you get like the gloopy just blobs of it everywhere and you feel like you're having to spread it out with your finger if you do it this way and actually use this nozzle to do your spreading I find it makes a big difference but it really does smell so I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to just go into hold that down make sure it's straight Though to be honest, nothing seems straight at the minute. I seem to have put everything on wonky. And I'm going to get my card and just make sure I've got a good connection there. Just with it being higgledy piggledy and a bit bent and a bit creased and a bit wavy. I just want to make sure that's properly stuck on. And there we have it. There's the front bit of our folio. So I'm going to turn over and we're going to start working on this side now. So all I did on here was put a little bit of collage. This was just some torn up paper with a fussy cut. And I put some of the tape, this tape, here just to strengthen this when I put the eyelet in um, so I think but actually I think what I may do this time I'm wondering whether to try um, maybe putting some tape in but then using one of the you know these brown hole reinforcers I'm not sure I'm not sure what to do about that or whether to just go for the eyelets anyway I'll think about that in a minute. What I am going to do is think about what I'm going to put on here. So I thought that flower looked nice with the colours in this. So I think I'm going to use that. And I think instead of using the patterned paper, there's quite a nice lot of texture here on this background. And it might tie in. It's the same background we use for the inside of this booklet. I thought it would tie in nicely with that and also this bluey colour would tie in nicely with the blue on here. So I'm thinking of possibly just cutting some of that down, or tearing some of that down, I should say. And seeing what I get. Honestly, I don't want that straight line there. I'd have to tear that down a little bit more. And then just down there. So this is this is my type of crafting. This is the type of crafting I like where I don't have to measure. I will just literally have a go, see what happens. And see where things end up. Where did I put that flower? Yeah. See, I quite like that there. Just got a little bit of the turquoise poking out. And you'll see again when I ink around this. It just all starts to tie together. When you get rid of that white, look how beautifully it just blends in. Again, I'm just going to switch. I'm just going to ink my little flower just to get rid of that start white. I don't really fancy my chances of um, trying to fussy cut in between those really thin stalks. Yep, 
blends in nicely and then like I did with the other one it's just going to go around this edge just to get rid of the white not necessarily to add any extra colour just just where I've cut oops just to tidy that up a bit it's quite a delicate fussy cut this one what you could do is fussy tear you could fussy tear around the outside and leave it as a bigger section that would look nice if you didn't want to cut so close to the flower you could do that that would be nice okay let's see how that looks right so i want a little bit of that turquoise showing so if i had the flower more if I had that lower That I quite like it like that so that that petal is coming off there. Yeah. Okay, so let me get that stuck down. I'm just gonna use Pritt stick for this. Oh actually no. First, I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this just to make sure it will fit. So I want that there. Cut it about there so I can. Then I'm going to stick this on. So I have it so those numbers are showing, so I'll have it that way. Do it about halfway in the centre. I'm not doing really not doing very well at all. We're getting things in the centre today. I'm sure that will still be seen here. Yeah. I'm just going to turn it over, bring it down like that, and then I'm just going to trim round like that. So I was going to put that back there, wasn't I? So you better. Like that. Okay. Alright, let's get this glued down. then I think I will use the wet glue for this I don't want to rip any of it this is just PVA it's nothing special it's not art glitter or anything like that just the job for me What I usually do if I use wet glue, I will just let it sit for a second for it to catch. Otherwise, I find that I end up moving it around. Stick that back in there. 
Right, now I've let that sit for a few seconds. Then I can come in and just make sure everything's flat and get rid of any excess. Apologies again if I'm moving the... camera. And while that dries, two ticks. I'm just going to grab my eyelets. Right, so I've got my eyelets and I've got my cropper dial. And I hope you're still filming because my um just had a notification come up to say that my battery was running down. So let's see. Right, so we're gonna put an eyelet in here. Which colour do I want? It's quite a nice one, isn't it? goodness sake yeah right, I'll use that one now I think I've actually been using the wrong hole I think you're supposed to use the big one and I've been using the small one. Oh no oh no I'm right small one so I'm going to stick a hole in here as close to the center as I can Like that. Cut that off. Stick this through. See, this is where what makes me think I should have used the bigger one. But then the bigger one looks so much bigger than this. And I think if it's too big, it's going to go wobbly and not go through. So what do I do? I sometimes think I'd rather have it smaller and have it held tight than have it bigger and wobble around. Right, so. See, it's out again now. <laughs> this is what I mean. If I had it bigger, it would be... Um, It would be all over the shop. If anybody knows, it's the memory keeper, it's the cropper dial. It's always so, these eyelets are the actual memory keeper ones. We are memory keepers ones. So if anybody knows, do I use the large hole or the small hole? Can you, um, could you let me know? Be much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, right, so I've got that in there. That's ready for some string. And the last thing to do is we're just going to glue our fold out journaling spot down here. Now this works out really well actually because it kind of gives you a faux top to the envelope. But because obviously we don't want to glue this envelope down, when I've been gluing this on, I've just been gluing just kind of over maybe about two thirds of the way to get it stuck down and then anything I need to glue down afterwards I just kind of come in with my wet glue and do it like that um, so you can just glue down directly onto the back because that is actual actually the middle panel it's this one okay so print stick straight onto the back about two thirds of the way leaving yourself a little space so that you don't glue your envelope closed. Okay, so plenty of glue on there. And I'm just going to place it down. Probably could come down a little bit further actually. Because again, I've not put it in the middle. get 
that nicely burnished down where you can it opens from the top remember if you've done it if you've cut your tabby bits not on the crease okay so you can see there I've just done it two thirds I've still got a little bit of space there so all I'm going to do is come in now now I know how far to go just going to come in now with the wet glue just stick that where I need it along here went a bit mad there a bit extra hold it down for a few seconds get rid of any excess and then you'll see then that that's nicely stuck down but you haven't stuck your envelope closed okay right while that dries I'm just going to get a length of string I use quite a lot of string because I wanted to wrap it around twice So I just cut myself a length of string. This is quite um, a tough, robust string. Folded it in half so that the ends met. Put it through. I think it went through that way. And brought those through there pull it tight and this is where just having that extra little bit of ribbon tape or whatever it is that you want to use fabric just helps to strengthen it a little bit when you when you pull it you know to put your string in place and then that just wraps round you could go once I like to go twice and then I like to I just like to tuck, but you know, you can wrap a bow or do whatever. Um, and there we have it. That's our little grungy booklet envelope folio. I don't, I don't really have a name for it. It's just a little something that I came up with. So we would open it like that. We would open it up. We would have our whatever you wanted in there. I just used some from the kit. Um, so this is one of the journaling cards from the kit. And what I would do is I don't really like um, string on top of tags and journaling cards. I just, I find that I can't really get, you know, the bits that stick up, they just seem to go, like, I don't know, they just look straight and awkward, but I just tend to like to either fold a piece of paper over and staple that down, like this perhaps, and just make a tab that way or use some fabric or some lace or something and then you can stick whatever you want in there you could use put some extra paper in there if you wanted um whatever you want really you could go in there you could put some these would be good for happy mail actually wouldn't they because they are even with this journal in, these extra pages in here they are actually very flat and they're envelope size so you could put some little ephemera bits in there if you wanted to. But basically that's the bare bones of it. The dead quick, I mean, a little bit, out, not quick in terms of, you know, a five minute job. I just mean quick in terms of, they're not that difficult. Obviously, you know, you have got your paints and your splattering and things like that. But if you did a few at a time, then you know kind of on like a what do they call it like one of those um you know when you get in a line and mass make can't think of what it's called um you can let all that dry then it's just a case of folding a piece of paper over and making your tag sticking a bit of collage down and making a little booklet so if you did each individual bit separately 
and then just assembled at the end. You've actually got quite a quick make there on your hands. Um, so yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. You could, if you wanted, put some tape in here if you wanted to strengthen the spine. You could put it here. If you wanted to, it's entirely up to you. You could collage further in there. You could even put some pages in there if you wanted, you know, entirely up to you. But that's the bare bones of um, the folio. So I really hope you enjoyed it. We've got nice little selection there all following the same principle but all with a slightly different take and a slightly different look um just ready then to slip into a journal as an extra or into as i say happy mail or something like that i would love if you make one of these um, if you put a picture of it on Instagram, I would love you to tag me at 14 designs because I would really love to see um, your take on this and I would love to see what papers you've used and any variations you've come up with. So that would be really, really good to see. Um, as I say, don't feel pressured into using my kit. You know, just use whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, like I said, I just use my kit because I wanted... I wanted something like that for, you know, for a project I was doing. Um, and that's why I use my kit. But anything, anything at all that you've got, scraps, um, neutrals, bright colours, anything. Even fabric, you could do this with fabric, couldn't you? You could make a fabric envelope, perhaps, um, and come up with a variation that way. That would be nice. But yeah, I would love to see anything that you have made. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoy crafting. I would love any comments or any feedback if you would like to leave them down below. Um, I'd love to, to read those and to get to know some of you a little bit better. You can follow me on, as I say, Instagram at shop14. All of my social links I will put down below. I will put my Kofi shop and my Etsy shop, but again, not to try and press you into buying, just if you're interested in the type of thing I do and my type of work, you can go and have a look, that's all. That's the only reason I'm dropping those links. But for, please don't feel pressured in any way. Um, anything else to say? No, I don't think so. Um, please head over if you are looking for some freebies or you don't want to purchase any printables at the moment, but you are after some little freebies that you might want to use in your work and or in your projects, please head over to my Kofi page because there are, um, I think there's maybe three or four on there at the moment. Um, I haven't long had the Kofi page, so obviously there's not loads on there, but there is a good amount so far. Are we still filming? Yes. My camera keeps telling me it's low in battery and I'm, I'm worrying that it's going to cut out. So yeah, given that, I'd best get going. But yeah, if, you want any, if you're after any freebies, head over there. Um, you're more than welcome to download anything that has free on there. It's in the shop section, but it's free. And it says free on there. Um, and you just go and help yourselves. And you can have a little bit of fun with those. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. And I'm really hoping to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.